What's up, CoderBite? Welcome back to another Data Structures and Algorithms video. I'm Elizabeth, and today we are kicking off a brand new series here on the CoderBite YouTube channel, and we're going to call it Back to Basics. This is going to be whiteboard style interview problems that I'm just going to try and solve. And there's going to be minimal slides, maximum coding. I'm going to show the problem and then try and solve it as if I were actually in an interview. I'm also going to use Python. JavaScript was my first love, absolutely, but Python is a pretty great language too. So if you guys are into that, definitely leave it in the comments below and we'll keep making more videos like this. And with that, let's get into this week's problem. Given a sorted array with unique integer elements, write a function to create a binary search tree with minimal height. So there are a few things highlighted here, so let's just take note of that. Unique integer elements, and it's sorted, and we want to create a binary search tree with minimal height. Okay, so first thing you'll notice is I am not using Visual Studio Code. I am using PyCharm just because this is what I use at my day job when I write any sort of Python code, and uh, it's a great um, Python IDE. So another thing I'd like you to notice is that I'm using Python version 3.8. Uh, some of the things that I'll use today might not work with Python 2, 2.7. Um, so just you know keep that in mind depending on whatever Python interpreter you want to use. Okay, so the question is as follows, right? We want to um, write a function to create a binary search tree from a sorted array of unique integers. And we want that binary search tree to have minimal height. So let's talk about what a binary search tree even is. So I'm going to write a little comment here. Um, so in general, you might hear of binary search tree or a binary tree, and those are actually two different things. So binary tree is going to be a tree in which each node has at most two children, right? That's any binary tree. And so most trees you'll see are going to be binary trees where every node has only at most two children. So what's a binary search tree? A binary search tree is specifically a binary tree, right? A binary tree in which all the left children of a node are less than or equal to, their values are less than or equal to n being the you know, node in question. And then n is less than all of n's right descendants. So essentially what that gives you is that binary tree, um, but you know that all of the left descendants of a node are going to have a value that's less than that node and all less than or equal and all of the right descendants are going to be greater than or equal. So for this question we're dealing with, we want a binary search tree. So that's important to note. And we want it to have minimal height. So what does that actually mean, minimal height? That means that every single level of the tree has to have all of its children filled in before we get to the next, or all of its possible children filled in, and before we start to add children to any further down levels. So of course, if there's empty spaces for a smaller than child or a greater than child, and we're trying to place a smaller than or greater than child, and there isn't that spot available, then we can start a new level somehow or some way. Um, but in general, we basically want to have each level pretty filled out as much as we possibly can to have minimal levels in our tree. Okay, so I think essentially what we want to be doing here is we want to write some code to create this binary tree, binary search tree. And I think that in order to have that minimal height requirement met, we want to always be starting at the middle point of the sorted index, uh, the sorted array of integers, and then create binary trees as children recursively. And in that way, we'll, we'll always know that we are organizing our tree in such a way that all of the levels will be fully filled out because every root node is going to be the middle of the next subset of uh, integers. So let's get some examples and let's also write what we'll definitely need, which will be a you know, node class for our binary trees. 
So that's going to be pretty standard and pretty easy here. We're just going to write class node and we're going to make an init function here. And we're basically going to init it with a value, right? This is going to be the value of the node. And right away, we want to assign that self.value equal the value. And then we basically want to put have every node have a left and a right descendant, right? So self.left equal none, and you know, just at the start, and self.right equal none. And that way, when we assign the left and right, we can assign it to whatever instance of the node, the node that we're assigning, that we're creating as its left child or its right child. So I believe that's all we'll need here. Um, and let's go down and actually, you know, kind of talk through our, our function that we're going to be writing here. So when you write Python code, generally uh, a file that you want to run, um, you want to uh, check if the dunder name property is main. And if that's the case, call a function, right? So we can get that started right here. If dunder name equals main, right? And then here is where we're going to call our function. So let's actually, before we do that, let's make a function here. And let's say def create minimal BST, right? And I think that's going to take an array. And then we can just say pass for now. Okay, so if, if the dunder name is main, we want to call create minimal BST. So let's say create minimal BST. And let's say for now, we want this to be one, two, three. So here's our array that we're passing in, right? And essentially what we'd, we'd want here is we would want two to be the root and we'd want the left child to be one and the right child to be three. Now, if we made three the root, we would have to make the left child two and then the left child of that one for it to actually be a binary search tree. And that would not be a tree with minimal height because that would be three levels instead of just two levels. So that's what I was talking about before that we'll want to kind of start here and then recurse out on either side to create this minimal minimally level tree with minimal levels situation. Okay, so we have our, um, you know, kind of initial function call. Let's talk about what we'll want to do here. So I think that probably what we'll want to do because we're recursing is we're going to want to have some sense of, we're going to want to have a because we're going to want to make this our original root node, and then we're going to want to recurse, we're going to want to have a function that also takes parameters that are kind of the bounds of the recursion. So that when we pass in those, um, you know, the sub array or, you know, the left array and the right array, we're going to want to tell our function, hey, this is the new, you know, bounds of the new tree that we're adding to the left or the right. So we're going to want to take in kind of this a concept of the start and the end of the array that we're looking at. So generally, in order to do that, I usually make like a maybe like an underscore of the same exact thing, right? Because in terms of the interviewer, they ask for an array that takes they ask for a function that takes an array. And we're going to have a function now that takes an array and also a start and an end. So this is almost like a wrapper around this underscore create minimal BST, which is going to take the same array and then a start and an end so that we can kind of tell it like, hey, look at the, this part of the array or look at that part of the array. Don't look at the entire array. So that's going to be our underscore method here. And I believe so that means here we will want to call the underscore method with that same array. And then at first, we're going to want to call it with the whole entire array, right? So that's going to be zero is where it's going to start. And then the length of the array minus one. And so that's going to pass it the entire array. And then here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually do our logic. So I think what we'll want to do, right, is right off the bat, if we're going to recurse, we want to make a base case. So what's our base case where we'll want to kind of just, you know, stop? We've done it already. 
I think that will be if at, at any point the end is less than the start. That means that we've already looked at the smallest amount possible of the subarrays. We've looked at everything. So we can set that up right here. So that's going to be if the end is less than the start, just return none. Okay. So right off the bat, that's kind of like, okay, we've done it. And now what we want to do is we essentially want to get that middle, right? And we want to create a node out of it. And then we want to recursively call this function for the everything lower than the middle and everything higher than the middle. And we want to keep pulling out the middle, middles of each of those subarrays until we've we have no more middles, which is uh, represented by this case right here, right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to get the middle number, right? So we can say the middle number is the start plus the end. Um, and then I actually don't know what this is called, but it essentially is, I believe it's called the integer division, right? Like it, whatever, when you divide, it only takes an integer value. So you don't have to do any rounding, you don't have to do any flooring, but essentially that is just the um, integer division operator, which only keeps the whole number component of whatever the um, division re returns. So that's a really like nice, easy way to just, you know, we don't care about whether it's, um, you know, rounded, floored, uh, just, just take the integer and then the rest of the function will deal with, um, you know, when we pass in the first half of the array and the second half of the array, you know, whatever, doesn't matter. Okay, so we have our middle now. And then I think the next thing we want to do is we want to create a node out of this, right? So let's say new node is going to be, right? So we're going to create a new instance of our node class and we're going to pass in the value, right? So this is going to be the array at that middle point. And so this is going to be our first root node at this, at this stage. This is the root node of the main BST. Now, I believe all we want to do is we want to continue to do this until we reach this case, right? Until we have no more middles. We've, we've seen everything already and we've added it all. So what we have to do for that, I think it might just be as easy as saying that new node dot left is going to be, you know, recurse, right? So we're going to pass in that array. And then we're going to pass in, we want to pass in the left half of that array. So that's going to be the start. It's going to be the same start. And then we're going to pass in the mid minus one, right? So we're going to get the left half of the array and create a new minimally high BST for as its left descendant. And then as its right descent, descendant, we can do the same. And we can pass in the array and we can pass in the middle plus one and then we can pass in the end which we can retain there and then what all we have to do now i think the reason why this is um all squiggled out is we have to return something right so i think eventually we can just return the root node right and that root node because we want to assign the results of this to the left and the results of this to the right, which is going to be the new root node. We want this to ultimately return the new root node and we always wanna return the new root node. Um, and eventually when the recursive stack finishes, finishes its thing, everything is popping off, we'll end up with the original root node, which will be the original middle of our array. So let's do that right, right here. This is going to be return the new node. And I think that that might be it, which is kind of crazy that, that it's, it's, it's a relatively easy problem. Um, I think the only thing left that I will want to do here is show this on the screen, right? We're going to want to display this somehow. And I think that for that, I am going to Google and I'm going to copy and paste from Stack Overflow kind of a Pythonic uh, display 
binary search tree situation. Now I've gone through this myself a few different times and it's kind of complex in terms of what it's doing. And I highly suggest that you guys go through it as well on your own. But I don't think that is so relevant for this particular video. So I'm just going to copy it in and paste it in here. Um, let's get rid of these white. But essentially what's happening here is, let's go through it real quick, is that we're going to have a display method, which is then going to call this display auxiliary method. And the display auxiliary method is essentially just going to recurse down the, um, the tree. And it's going to pretty print all of these lines with the values and the branches all pretty printed. And it's basically going to add variable numbers of width, middle, uh, height, et cetera, depending on how many children there are and how many levels there are for the tree. And then at the end, it finally prints the whole thing in a really beautiful way. And um, it's definitely pretty cool code. And I am going to put it in the description of this video because I think it's important to go through and like know what you're using here. But essentially that's all it's doing. It's doing some complex uh, you know, logic. It's, it's judging how many children there are. And then it's adding the correct number of white, sp white spaces, um, you know, branches, et cetera, to make it a beautiful tree. So let's... So this is now going to return the root node, right? So this is going to be root. And then we can just call root.display. And I think that that is just going to show us our tree if it actually works. So let's. So I don't know about whatever ID you guys are all using, but in PyCharm, you can just run it like this, which is pretty cool. So I'm just going to run it. And there's our tree, we have it. We have our root node, which is two, and then we have our left part, which is one, and our right part, which is three. All right, so let's make sure that this actually works with more numbers, right? Because we wanna make sure that even, no matter how many numbers we give it, it is a height, a tree with minimum, minimal height, right? So let's do one more. We can run it again. Okay. And you see here that we, with each call, we take the middle of the next, you know, part of the array. So first we take five, which is the middle. Then we take two, which is the middle of one to four. And we take eight, which is the middle of six to 10. And then we have one and three and four. And here we have six, nine, seven, and 10. So this is a, a good tree and it is minimally high, right? Every single level is filled out entirely except for this bottom one, because we don't have as many to fill it out. But let's make sure, right, we can add 11 and make sure that that last level gets filled out, filled out uh, almost completely. I guess we still have some, we have one, two, three, four, five spaces left on that level. But let's, let's see. So you can see here that we are then, we continue to fill out, right? We continue to fill all the layer levels out and we have everything filled out as it should be. So yeah, that's, that's basically the problem. Um, I, again, highly suggest that you go through this with uh, different numbers and see what happens. And then I suggest you go through this display code just because it's interesting and it's kind of useful and it's super fun. I tried to write my own for this video, but it's a lot harder than it's than it seems. So if you feel like doing that as an exercise, do it. Leave it in the comments below. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically it for this problem. So I hope you all enjoyed that, and I hope I got the job. I hope you all enjoyed the first video in our Back to Basics series. We're going to be doing a bunch more of these. Our hope is that we can give you all some really short bite-sized videos that you can watch kind of here and there just to see, you know, lots of different problems, maybe some easier problems, some trickier problems, but really just watching me code and watching, seeing how you can go about solving some of these problems. Um, so yeah, if you have any problems that you'd like to see, leave them in the comments. We read all of them. So if you have any um, kind of requests, 
please send them our way. And with that, have a great week, everybody.